All right, guys, so if any of you are interested in what was the start of these base hammers, they will be linked in the description below. This is the uh, S-Wing long-handled four and a half pound sledge. This is a uh, legit two-handed, uh, you know, hammer if you really want it to be. Uh, with, a, with a digger plate welded on it, this thing's, it's over five pounds, so it'll really get the job done. Uh, and then of course the hammer that you guys are about to see the video me making the long handled mason hammer will also be linked with that let's get going There it is guys, so if you're like me and you like to tinker, you're always trying to you know, perfect the wheel, uh, reinvent the wheel, make things easier on yourself, I'm no different. Right here is all the ones that I've got easily accessible to me, but these are all different style trapping hammers that I've built, modified, or made over the years. And uh, you know, I'm always on the quest to find the perfect hammer. Uh, tweaking things from year to year depending on techniques and styles and different things you know and uh, it just never seems like that you can get the perfect hammer. That being said until this year. Guys I give you the ultimate trapping hammer. Um, this is a hammer that I've put a lot of thought into and I've got a whole season behind it now and it has performed flawlessly. Uh, real, real quick guys, before we jump into the video, what this hammer allows you to do is have a lightweight hammer capable of pulling fence staples, digging in trap beds, driving in stakes, as well as having a cutting edge to either cut roots or saplings. Uh, it, is, it is a beast, let me tell you. And it has taken the progression of all these to finally get to this hammer. So let's jump back a couple of months here to whenever I built this hammer. Uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy this process and uh, we'll check back with you. So before we get to building this thing, I just want to kind of go over my thought process going into this. Like I said, this, is, this hammer is it's going to be made specifically for my application. So I want to be able to dig a trap bed. Obviously, I want to be able to drive stakes. I want to be able to cut down small saplings to use as toggles because I use fence staples a lot and I want to be able to pull fence staples with it. So I want to have this hammer that's lightweight enough uh, to be able to carry with me but still be versatile enough to, to do anything on the trap line. You know, so I don't have to carry a five pound, four, four pound or five pound sledge with me on, on the coon line or you know, to set DPs with. So this is, this is kind of what I started out with. Um, this is a 22 ounce long handled brick hammer. The thing that drew me to this for the start was it's a long shank uh, handle. So where I, I'll be able to get a cutting edge out of this handle as opposed to the shorter ones. Not only that, but it's a lightweight hammer. This is only like a 22 ounce hammer. So uh, you know your shorter hand hammers, which I've had in the past, it's hard to get a lot of leverage of swing you know, whenever you're trying to drive uh, big stakes. But this leverage with this long handle, it works similarly to uh, like kind of the new style of thinking with the framing hammers where you get, you know, velocity over weight. Uh, basically, the faster you move the hammer, it, it kind of hits the same as a, as a heavier hammer going slower. So that's kind of the thought process going into this. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so going into this, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do just a couple, three things, and and then it's going to be done because we've already started off with such a good, uh, such a good start with this hammer. So naturally, the brick hammer, it's got the wide face on it, uh, you know. So this is going to be perfect for digging trap beds. We're just going to take a little bit, grind a little bit off, make it a little bit more uh, like a chisel edge, you know, for digging those trap beds, cutting those roots, you know, cutting the sod out, everything else. Obviously, we've got the hammer head on it for driving stakes fence staples, you know, whatever. Uh, so we've got that. So the final thing we're going to do is we're going to make this hammer where I can pull fence staples. Most of the small game stuff I used two inch fence staples. 
And I always pull these fit staples whenever I, I move to a different location, you know. Uh, all, every, every bit of the ground I trap is private and I don't want to have the landowner come in and, and hit a fence staple with a chainsaw or, you know, get a flat tire potentially, you know, because of my just laziness. So I always pull these fence staples out whenever I leave, take them with me, and uh, I want to have that, that in the tool too. I, I'm going to take inspiration from from this hammer. This is my everyday framing hammer. This is one I carry with me every day. Uh, and what it has is this this particular hammer has what they call a side nail puller in it. Basically it's just a slot here on the side and uh, rather than pulling like this and having that pivot point right there, uh, you're able to, to slide the nail head into the side nail puller and then use all the leverage right here and the whole leverage of your handle to basically pull the nail out. So I'm going to take inspiration from this hammer here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weld a hook onto the side face of this hammer and then what that will allow me to do is basically come up to the fence staple, put that hook through it and then since this is a long handle I've got a ton of leverage and I'll be able to roll that fence staple out. So what I've got for the hook is obviously there's going to be a lot of stress on this one particular joint uh, you don't want a soft metal. So what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to take uh, this is just a, an old master lock here a good quality master lock with good steel that we had to cut uh, to get in the job trailer so I just took the half of this off and this is good steel I'm going to cut it and I'm going to weld it onto the face of this hammer and then that'll give me that hook that I can slide into the fence staple and, uh, and just roll that out. So what I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to go ahead and do the hook first. So what I've done is I've done little little things off camera uh, just to kind of speed things up, but I'll, I'll just kind of share with you what I've done. So as I said before, uh, you know, on the job site we're always losing keys, so we're always cutting locks off uh, the job trailers. So what I did was I took one of these old locks. This is real, real hard steel, and this is what I'm going to use to make the the puller for the fence staples. So what, I'd, uh, what I've done is, you can see, this is a, this is a lock that we've cut off. It's just got the, the arch right there. So what I did, I cut that into two pieces, which is just right, right in two. And then what I did was, I took, and I took one side of that, and I kind of tapered it down with a grinder. Just so where, you know, whenever you're going to be able to, uh, you're going to have a little bit of that fence staple coming up out of the, the trunk or the log or whatever, you can kind of get that, get that hook in there and get that fence staple started to pull it. So I just kind of made a, a cone basically out of it. So then what I did is I came over to my hammer here and this is right where I want to, uh, this is where I want to use the pull with. So I took a drill bit and I drilled down into the meat, the head of the hammer there a little ways and that's where I'm going to bed that, that hook. So what I'll be able to do is I'm going to TIG weld this. I'm not going to MIG it. I'm going to TIG weld it and what I'll be able to do is that'll give me a little bit stronger weld as opposed to just setting it you know, right on the, right on the top and, and kind of relying on that weld because I know the steel's hard enough but really it's the weld here that's going to end up being uh, technically the weak point if not done correctly. So I've drilled myself a hole in there, uh, probably about a quarter inch deep. And whenever I drill it, I drill it with a slight taper. So whereas you can see, uh, as you can see, that's that's how the hook is going to sit, roughly in the hammer. And then you'll be able to to kind of come at that fence staple, use the leverage of the hammer to roll it over and pull that fence staple. So we uh, we got that stuck on there pretty good there with the TIG welder see the cone just a little bit better uh, with that profile and so what that's going to do is that's going to allow that fence staple to make contact as close to the hammer face as possible and uh, you know that way all the pressure will be you know they won't have a big leverage point basically with this being a mason's hammer it's got a little bit of a, a bend down and I prefer this is uh, this is this is situational of course but uh, over the years, I, I prefer more of a straight handle rather than a curve. The, the thing with a curved um, blade, I guess you might call it, is it, it wants to 
pull the stuff back at your face, you know, if you're digging in the ground, you know, especially like semi frozen ground. So, I'm gonna take and just reprofile that a little bit with a grinder and just kind of make it a little bit more straight. And um, then I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and put a little bit of a blade there. What I did was, you can see here, I uh, see that focus there. I went ahead and I took a, a piece of lawnmower blade. You can use. Uh, you know, AR steel or, or hardened steel of any sorts. I've always just used lawnmower blades for the bits of my hammers and everything else. It's good, good enough hard steel. Uh, you know, it's easily available. So anyway, I took a chunk of it and uh, I basically ground down a very nice axe type of shape there. It comes to a very nice sharp fine edge there. Uh, and because I've already ground the bevels into this handle, uh, this will be real, real easy to to weld in here so it's about uh, it's about two inches two inches wide and four inches long uh, but it just fits real nice here into the into the handle just slightly inset from the actual head of the handle so uh, you can see I just got my magnet here and I'm just gonna set that in there and I've got a real nice trough to fill full of weld bead here and uh, we'll weld that up and then that way uh, you know, we'll give that a go. All right, so this is the uh, this is the finished hammer here. You can see we've got the the blade welded on, uh, kind of ground everything up, cleaned everything up. We've got the hook here, so uh, let's give this thing a test here. Uh, just kind of see real world experience before we get going here for the season. But uh, anyway, I think it'll do real good. Um, I've got some fence staples here with me. Um, we're gonna try to try to mimic making a set. So a lot of times, like I said, a lot of times I have to cut down small saplings for my drag. So here's a perfect example of a of a sapling here. You know, this is probably two two and a half inch sapling at the base, and uh, let's just see, you know, what we're gonna be able to do with it. So kind of come here with our with our axe here. Right, cut it. To real nice all right so that's three wax with that thing so I'm more than impressed with that that definitely won't take any time uh, here's another one for you let's see if we can I want to be down in one one go around so very impressed with that that'll do just fine Okay, so because of the camera angle and everything, uh, we're just gonna mimic this. This is higher up in a tree, but let's just see. We'll get a good, good stout drive into this tree, and then that way, uh, you know, we can test the pull factor, basically. So, right there's the uh, the fence staple here, about the trap. Get it started there. So there's a two inch fence staple. Just leave enough for our little hook here we've got in this thing. So we'll just start that hook in there. By doing what I did, you can see it push that fence staple all the way in the back. So the leverage point is right up against the face of the hammer. We'll just work it right out. So that's awesome. Uh, let's do another one just for you guys. We'll go cut down more trees because this thing here, I'm telling you, is sweet. It is uh it's doing every single thing I wanted it to do. So like I said, find a find a root or a stump. There's your fence staple. I'm telling you guys a two-inch fence staple will hold any coon, any skunk, any I wouldn't use it for canines. Um but anything you're gonna catch in a dog proof, you know, uh, I use them for one and a halves. If you catch the odd thing, I still think it holds. It takes an enormous amount of force to pull that fence, that barbed fence staple. All right, so let's draw this back out. We'll take our hammer, stick it up in there. You can see, just roll that sucker right out. I don't think we're gonna have an issue one with that. Uh, let me take you over and we'll do some some digging with it. 
All right, guys, so here's a good example where this tool would come in real handy. Uh, you can see here, you've got a kind of a crawl under there. It's just a natural trail that uh, kind of goes underneath this root ball. Now, if I set that trap there, you've got all these little saplings. It's a good spot to set a blind set, but these little saplings here uh, could potentially get that trap hung up. So, good place to set, but let's see here. We'll take our makeshift axe here. And in very, very short order, we can remove all that. And now, that trap doesn't have a chance to get hung up near as bad. So we'll use the other side of it, say. We can dig our trap bed. So that all works good. Let's just say, I don't have a foothold with me, but let's just say this dog proof we've been using is our trap. Let's come right around in here, into this root. Get that fence staple started. Got that sucker nice secured in there, then we can put our trap be about our way. Come up to pull this thing, get our hook in there, comes right out. So anyway guys, anyway guys, preliminary testing is, is doing awesome. You can see, I mean you can beat this sucker around, good welds, uh, I'm very, very happy with this, with this so far. So, anyway, like I said, we've got a, basically uh, a pick, like a Maddox head. We've got a hammer. I know some of you guys are gonna be saying, oh, that may slip, and I may booger that up from time to time, and that's okay. Uh, we'll regrind it. You know, we've got our hook here for pulling the fence staples, and then naturally we have our hammer, so. Big long handle thing. We got a lot of leverage. I'm telling you, swinging this thing, you get two hand, two hands on that handle. Um, you're definitely going to be able to drive a stake with it. It's not going to have the weight of like a five-pound hammer, but it's definitely going to uh, definitely going to do you a good job as a multi-purpose tool. So, very happy with this, guys. Um, I'm gonna get this sucker painted up, and we're gonna check back with you guys in about. 85 days because I'm gonna put the sucker to work this year and it'll be used every day. So we'll see uh, We'll see how it holds up because it's definitely gonna get some use All right guys, so as promised Here it is Almost 90 days later and a tough season behind it. Uh, I can only say good things about this hammer uh, And how it performed like I said, I put this thing through hell this winter. I pulled I don't know several hundred fence staples with it uh, cut down you know probably probably a couple hundred small saplings with it dug in frozen ground thawed ground muddy ground and wailed on a bunch of uh, earth anchor stakes with this hammer and it had performed perfectly uh, I have no problems with anything so the hook the hook is just is perfect I'm so glad I did that it saves me carrying a, a pair of fencing pliers so it's just one less thing I have to carry in the field but uh, the, the blade, as far as the, the axe or the hatchet part of this thing, performed great. I can, I can take down two, two and a half inch saplings, three inch saplings in, in a couple, three swings, no problem. Uh, everything performed great. I highly recommend you guys, if you have the ability, uh, get out and, and make you a version similar to this. this. Like I said, this hammer is designed for me and my use. If you're a kind of guy that doesn't do the kind of trapping I do, it's not for you. But for me, after all these years and after all the hammers that I've made, I can tell you right now, this is the one I'm settling on. This, I will not have to make another tool. Um, it took a while to come up with the design and everything else, obviously, you know, but it has performed and I can tell you this thing will, 
it will last a lifetime and I can't think of anything I would change. Um, the weight is perfect. You know, it's easy to carry around, but with the long handle, I mean, you can wail on a stake driver and still get it to drive, you know, very similar to even this big five pound sledge. So, like I said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As I said in the beginning of the video, if you guys um, would like to check out any of these base hammers, I'll leave a link. It's an Amazon affiliated link, so I do get just a tiny little kickback uh, if you guys purchase through my link. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. This was a fun project, and it is a lifetime tool now. So appreciate it, guys. Till the next time.